Hello guys, JNM here with a new Blender 2.8 video, in which I will show you some beginner techniques for modeling. But before we start, I would like to announce a new course from Zach Reinhardt, the Blender 2.8 Launchpad. It is an amazing course for beginners to Blender 2.8 that will let you become a pro step by step. Zach explains how to install Blender, shows the fundamentals of the user interface and he describes how to create objects, scenes and how to model meshes. You will learn how to animate models, the fundamentals of shading, lighting and rendering. The link to the course can be found in the description below, it's essential for getting started with Blender 2.8, get it now, the first 100 downloads get 10% discount. Ok, so let's start Blender 2.8, here in the lower right hand corner you can see the keys that I'm pressing and the mouse events. And I will also use for some special shortcuts my free fast carve add-on, for example for beveling an object. You can hide the sidebar by pressing the N key and on the left side you find the tools that you can show or hide by pressing the T key. What I also use is the official Pi menu, you can activate it by pressing the Tab key. Here it is, you can use it for example to change the mode, here I go from Object to Edit Mode. And the Pi menu is an add-on that you have to activate. You can find it in the Preferences under Add-ons when you search for Pi. And in my opinion, it's really comfortable to work with it. Ok, so let's go ahead and start modeling. We are going to create a very simple monitor. I start with the screen so I can use the existing cube. And we have to scale it in edit mode so you can either use the scale tool. But I prefer to use keyboard shortcuts. I press the S key. And then the axis for which I want to scale. So you press S and then Y in this case. And then you can just move the mouse to scale. And this is the base shape for the screen. I like to activate the look dev mode when I'm modeling, because then I can better see the material and the lighting. Ok, that's better and the next thing that I would like to do is to create round corners for the screen. So I select the edges at the corners. Ok, and then I press Ctrl and B to create bevels for these edges. Then I move the mouse to increase the size of the bevels and the mouse wheel to add more segments. The screen has an indentation at the front, so I go to face selection mode. Then select this face and press the I key to activate the indent tool. Then I move the mouse to define the size. Ok, then I add again a small indent and then I use the transform tool to move this face to the inside. Another tool that you can use here is the move tool. The transform just combines move, scale and rotate. Then I do the same for the back side of the screen, but we have to move this face here to the outside. So you can either extrude this face and then scale it down or as I do it here, I press I to indent the face and then move it to the outside. Ok, the screen looks nice, now the next thing that I like to do is to add a bevel to the object and I use the bevel object function of my fast carve add-on for this. This is just a shortcut for adding a bevel modifier and sharp edges. I decrease the size of the bevel a bit. And that looks nice, I will keep it like that. Then I move it a bit upwards and for this I use the move tool. The next object that we need to create is a kind of holder or connector. It's a small part to connect the screen to the stand of the monitor. And it is located at the center of the backside. So what I do is to select the face at the backside, then I press F3 to open the search and search for snap cursor to active. Because when you add a new object, it is created at the location of the 3D cursor. I added a shortcut to my fastcarve add-on for this action, it is called Cursor to Active. Alright, so let's go to Object Mode and add a plane, which is added now at this location. And this is the starting point for the connector. I press R, X and type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees around the X axis. Then I go to edit mode and scale it down by pressing the S key. 
and then increase the size again along the x-axis. You remember you just have to press S and X. Then I move this object a bit downwards using the move tool in object mode, like that. And then I switch to edit mode again and extrude this face by pressing the E key. For creating the connector I again have to indent this face, so I press the I key. And then I adjust the scale for this face by pressing S and X. And now I want to add rounded corners, as we did for the screen, but we run into a problem here. When I add a bevel now, you can see what happens to the geometry. It is split because it is connected to this edge, so I undo this. And I show you a method now to work around this. I activate the knife tool by pressing the K key, and I hold the control key down to snap to the center of the edges, and to apply the cut, I press the enter key. I do this two times for these edges here. And after that I dissolve the edges that are connected to the corners. I select them, then I search for dissolve edges. And after you selected this, be sure to uncheck dissolve words. Because then the vertices of the face in the center are not dissolved and it stays as is. And now we can go ahead and select the edges at the corners and add the bevels. Ok, so again, Ctrl and B to add these rounded corners. After that, I can extrude the face at the center to create the connector. I select this face and press E to extrude. I want the outer part to be round, so I select the edges in edge selection mode. And again press Ctrl and B to bevel this. As you can see, the bevel tool is really powerful and you can use it in many situations. Ok, I want this to be a bit larger, so I select these faces and press G and Y to move them to the outside. The G key is the shortcut for the move tool. And then I bevel this object again. Ok, this looks pretty nice. Now I want to join these two objects, because when I rotate or move the connector, I want the screen to move and rotate as well. So I press Ctrl and J. Now this is one object and the next thing we need to do is to set the origin for the object, the pivot point. And this will be used when I rotate the object. So I select this face here. And again I have a nice shortcut in my fast curve add-on which is called set origin. Ok, and now we can go to object mode and press R and X. And the object will be rotated around the x-axis, which goes through the origin that we set. Ok, it's time for the next object, and this will be the foot. I press Shift and C to set the cursor to the center, and then Shift and A to add a new object, and this is a cube. Then I switch to edit mode and scale down this cube by pressing S and Z. Then I select the face at the front and use the move tool to move it towards the center. Ok, now I want to add a rounded part at the back side. And to do this I first add a cut. I press K to use the knife tool and hold Ctrl to snap to the center of the edges. Then I have this cut, this edge. I select it and move it to the outside. And then I press Ctrl and B to add a bevel and create this rounded part. I use the mouse wheel to add more segments to the bevel. Ok, then I snap the view, activate Show X-Ray and go to Wireframe View. Then I use the Box Select tool by pressing the B key and select all these edges and move them a bit to the inside. Ok, that's better, and now select all the edges again at the corners and bevel these. Ok, again Ctrl B to add the bevel. And I also bevel the whole object.
All right, the last object that we need to add is the stand. I select this face in face selection mode and press cursor to active. And then I go to object mode and create a new plane. I scale this down as before by pressing the S key in edit mode. And once we found a good size for this, I will extrude this face. I go to edit mode again and press E to extrude it upwards. Then I move this face along the Y axis. Then I press Ctrl and R to add an edge loop. And for this we can also use the bevel tool to add segments. I can press Ctrl and B and move the mouse, but before I do this, I move the edge a bit to the outside. And after that I press Ctrl and B to add the bevel and create a kind of curved stand. Ok, and then I move the screen along the Y axis till it looks like as if it is connected to the stand. To make it look more crisp, I select these edges and again add some bevels. Alright, then I bevel the foot and the stand as well. And I join these two objects by pressing Ctrl and J. But as you can see, the foot is a bit large. I will reduce the size in a moment. First I select the screen and rotate it like that. And then I go to edit mode again, so that we can decrease the size of the foot. I press B to box select the parts at the front and move them to the inside. And then I press A to unselect all, hover with the cursor over this part and press the L key to just select the vertices of the foot. And then I press S followed by X to scale this along the X axis. Ok, that's it. We created a simple monitor and if you like you can go ahead now and add some materials. The first material, the default material, is already added. I renamed this to plastic. And I set the color here in the principal shader to a darker tone, like that. And increase the roughness a bit. Ok, this looks nice, so I apply the material to the foot and the stand as well. But for the screen we need a different material. The color has to be a bit lighter and it has to be more reflective, so I select the screen and add a new material and rename this to Screen. Then I go to Edit Mode and select this face and after that assign the screen material. I set the color of the material to a darker tone and after that I reduce the roughness. And this is basically all we have to do, it is more reflective now and looks pretty nice. Ok, then I hide the overlays and rotate the background a bit here in the look dev mode. And in the end I add some post processing effects like bloom, ambient occlusion and screen space reflection. Ok guys, that's it for the tutorial, let me again announce the course made by Zach Reinhardt. The Blender 2.8 launchpad, it's a great course for getting started with Blender 2.8, the link can be found in the description below and the first 100 downloads get a discount of 10%. Ok guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, stay tuned and if you have any questions add these to the comments. You can support me by being my patron, this would really help a lot. Thanks for this and I see you on JNM.